This is the all new Opel or Vauxhall Astra here in vertigo blue, beautiful Thomas blue color and it's now available also as the estate form. This is the Astra Sports Tourer and here on our channel Auto Gefühl with Thomas we talk about different colors, different trim levels. Also here for example a mid trim level, which one should you actually go for exterior interior differences? Is it now better than the Golf actually? In this case then the Golf variant. Can it be one of the top compact estates? We'll find out for you, let's go. Let's start here with the middle trim level elegance and also with a platinum gray vehicle. They all have in common that they have this mask here in the front, Stormtrooper style alike. They call it Opel Visor. The lights, LED standard, optional a matrix LED, they call it pixel light. 4 meters 64 or 183 inches is the length of the Astra Sports Tourer. That's 27 centimeters or 11 inches longer than the hatch version and you see it's a little bit more stretched here also with the contrasting black roof which is an option or standard for the high trim levels soon more deals to that very interesting from the design perspective looks quite sporty 16 inch would be the base wheel this is here a 17 inch wheel on the elegance trim soon going to show you also 18 inch wheels on the top GS line and the ultimate and here we can see how the vehicle looks like when it has the roof in vehicle color so this would be the standard in the elegance and also in the lower trims and then you can get either the black roof optional or the black roof is as I said standard for GS line and the ultimate both of the high trims and suspension is just one base suspension for all trim levels indeed torsion beam in the rear Design wise here very slim tail lumps and in the lower part a clean design without fake exhaust tips. So we started with the elegance trim level, the mid trim in platinum grey. These here are vertigo blue cars, Thomas blue color, beautiful color indeed and also the high trim levels GS line and ultimate. What's different? Now it gets really interesting. The GS line gets this black pack as standard. That means here the Opel logo is blacked out, a more sinister, sporty look and also a black accentuation right here. Also the black frames around the windows here at the side. So this is then all blacked out. However, you can see here it's not like a high gloss finish, but more like let's say a plain rubber look. So not that high class, but you have the black sporty look here indeed and also the black roof as standard here the ultimate also high trim level but then you keep the chrome here also with the bright opal logo and also here at the side the chrome situation however what you can do is take the ultimate because you might go for the most options like a panoramic roof and so on but then also black the logo out with a black pack and then actually ultimate and gs line will basically look the same. The only difference that always will remain is that you have the ultimate batch here right at the side. So there it is, that's the ultimate batch. And in the way it is here as the standard ultimate, it also gets the chrome frame in the lower window side. But as I said, if you picked in the black pack for the ultimate, you can black it out here in the lower part and then both GS line and ultimate will basically look the same. And here the ultimate at the rear you can see it once more all the letterings logo in the chrome style and I think what's a, what a beautiful clean design in the lower part no fake exhaust whatsoever that's how it's done clean and honest design and another comparison here with the vertigo blue car with the GS line or if you pick the black pack here then with black Opel logo black Astra lettering or Astra lettering so this once again brings this sportier darker look I think to me which one would I go for I think in this case it's really both do suit the car it really depends on if you rather want an elegant or a sporty focus when looking at the key fob you do realize that the Vauxhall or Opel Astra is the sibling of the Peugeot 308 because this is the PSA the Peugeot Citroen key then dog closing sound quite solid indeed and nice materials at the inside of the doors here is structured one also soft touch then it looks really fancy then you have this brushed aluminum look, look here and here in the elegance trim a bright styling and with a leather red in gray and this white accentuations in a harder style and then the window levers they are let's say more or less basic and once again really interesting now the bright seat styling for the mid trim level elegance where we have more sporty and darker look than later on the GS line and on the ultimate trim level. Here this is the comfort seat. Not so much shoulder accentuations 
soon also the sport seat as a contrast for you but this one in here set all on comfort you can also get it with the agr sign it's a special comfort sign so to speak and well, they look like the scandinavian furniture design really modern and bright and here we also have a bright headliner so if you want it comfortable bright and cozy the elegance trim level is the way to go and I'll soon also test the difference in the seating comfort but I feel like this is not only visually but also you know also practically the better thing maybe not for stains or so you know um, but for everything else because yeah they are really comfortable these seats so to me especially here in that compact segment yeah seating comfort wise visually the quality of the seats how the fabric feels also all animal free this is yeah the seats are definitely the highlight of this vehicle here the steering wheel has an interesting design and can be adjusted manually the only thing is that the steering column here that doesn't feel that high class and also has this um, spring effect um, yeah I'm not sure if they want to fix that actually and to me it looks a little bit odd because the airbag module is really thick then it's that slim in the lower part that looks a little bit off to me design wise doesn't it however this one here also with a manual seat control you can also get electric seats in the higher trims for example but here it's also easy to pump it up your all and with one meters 89 or six for two there's still a lot of headroom left you can also pick a panoramic roof then the headroom would shrink a little bit i'm soon going to show you if that still works and now let's take a look here at the different seat setup for the high trims Ultimate and GS line come with the sportier seats, more accentuations at the side here. And the Ultimate automatically comes with the microfiber here, the Alcantara on the inside, GS line with fabric first, but then also optional microfiber. And they look amazing. Same as for the Elegance seats. The Elegance have this you know, brighter trim as for the colors. These here once again sportier. And they're both very comfortable indeed. And also exclusive to Opel and Vauxhall. So the seat form itself already is different from the Peugeot. Very interesting. Which one is better for you? Which one is more comfortable? Both look cool. The material, the quality, both here of the microfiber and also of the fabric in the other seats. Quality-wise, really very good indeed. Hmm. They are both comfortable, but I would say, I think these seats in the Elegance are a little bit softer. So these ones here for a little bit more support for sporty driving, but for best comfort, I think I would stick with the Elegance seats. And another difference here in the high trims, GS line and Ultimate get the black headliner. So there again, the Elegance has this brighter look. And now Cornelius, our cameraman, will hate me for this because changing lights suddenly for the camera is not that good. Sorry, Cornelius. <laughs> this is here the panoramic roof in the ultimate trim. And this is just this manual shade. So why not? It just goes fast and that works. And then this is still one that you can actually open for real. So this brings some more light in. The only thing is, yeah, it does cost you a little bit of headroom, but still here with 189 or 602, there is headroom left. So for most, even tall people, this will still be fine to go for the panoramic roof option. Interior overview, so many things to discover. First of all, again, this nicely structured dashboard, also soft touch, that looks cool. And here with this bright elegance insert and this trim. And this is the Pure Panel Pro. The basic setup would be called Pure Panel, but it has then, you know, a basic plastic carrier and also not this high gloss finish. This one, the Pure Panel Pro, has a magnesium carrier for more stiffness and also le less rattling noises while driving. And also has this, let's say, like this clear glass panel. This will be standard now from Elegance Trim and also for the GS Line and Ultimate. So most will come like this now. Only the very base trim will come with the Pure Panel without Pro. Two times 10 inch, by the way, this screen setup. Interesting here in the part below the screen, real buttons for the home screen, for seat heating, for example, and also for the volume, a real jog, and the climate control can be controlled like this, up and down for the temperature, AC, really good here, vent strength and so on. So this is also better than the Peugeot 308 or in the VW Golf because they are hashtag capacitive BS all over the place, but here still real buttons, a conservative, but more, you know, like a better way to go for. Lower part behind here, there's another case, 
and then the middle console this doesn't look and doesn't feel good so high gloss black then this rubber style this is very cheaply done there it, you know comes down to the price and this is something I really don't like with this vehicle but here the cup holes behind it they are nice and adaptive they also keep bottles tight then you have a drive mode selector here to talk more about that while driving and if you have the 8-speed automatic it's also nicely integrated right here and the front part you have two USB-C chargers, although they look like USB-A, and an inductive charging pad. Yeah, but once again, the weakness of the interior here is definitely this middle console. What's however quite cool is a nice leatherette cover for this split armrest opening with a lot of, sp lot of space underneath. The climate unit, by the way, can also be controlled here in the screen, but yeah, of course I would do it as it's better to be with these real buttons. Then this is the home screen, like this, and can slide it for example here this is also the car internal GPS by TomTom Tom. um, it is usable yes most of the time probably you will use an Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and we can access it in the top left part and this is for example in the Google Maps integration and, and yeah most of the time probably we will still use that indeed and you see that the basic speed of the system is somewhat okay we've seen a lot worse during the years now for new vehicles so overall i think yeah it's nothing super fancy but it's basically okay this also looks really psa like so peugeot citroen how this menu is laid out so it's not the most fancy system you get long and the main thing is that it's fast enough to carry your apple carplay and android auto the steering wheel controls are quite nice because you also have real buttons here and also shifting pedals. So both on the left side for cruise control and on the right side then here you can actually control for example this way I go for our next radio station in the infotainment and here also another volume control or picking up the phone. Digital instruments on the left side kept pretty simple with a big speedometer digital and here you can also put then the map view inside that is a pretty helpful feature. Well you know I love the seats there's just one thing that is a little bit off and there's the attachment of the head restraint. I already told them um, they couldn't fix it yet maybe you know at a later stage here it is not that well attached and feels a little bit cheap from the build quality just how the head restraint is attached. The look again and the material quality is great. In the rear here this sports tour version has about six centimeters or two and a half inches longer wheelbase. I still do not fit in here that well when I'm driving in the front but you see here this knee recess so when I put the front seat just a few pumps higher then it's actually fine so if you're driving with tall L's in the rear just put the front seat a little bit higher it's okay because you have some space left in the headroom and then here this recess does fit a little bit better um, so that works then. In the German market, by the way, it's more like two-third, one-third split. So more people are going for the Sports Tourer than for the hatch version. It differs from market to market, but overall the Sports Tourer here is a very important model for Opel and Vauxhall. Here in the rear, you do have some headroom left. If you have the panoramic roof, actually, it's also a little bit less, but it does raise then here in the rear again. But overall a spacier feeling, actually, when you have this right headliner without the panoramic roof. Then in the middle part here you have cup holders. They are yes, rather adaptive but the edges here are you know adaptive somewhat for bigger bottles. Nice little red right here and it's actually a very comfortable seating position in the rear. So I, I like that just hard pick at the inside of the doors but you at least get the nice soft leather red right here so i really like this elegance trim and i also prefer to show you some mid trim level cars and not only the high trim rivets you know that manufacturers when they present the vehicles usually they put highest trim only like that's what we got but then not only you know not everyone buys these cars and this here the astra especially supposed to be a good price performance car which is still affordable that's why this vehicle that stands here right now is a more realistic one. And now this is what this vehicle is all about here the estate trunk 600 up to 1630 liters. We have this cover here and it has rails left and right so a clean solution. Then you see here more than enough space also the cabin trolley fits in, in a vertical way. The length is a meter or 40 inches as well 
as the width a meter of 40 inches and the total height here is at 70 centimeters or 28 inches well, about the total length but first of all here this is the petrol version and there you have more space underneath if you go for the plug-in hybrid this is basically you know not like this so you lose the space underneath than here in the plug-in hybrid or just have a little bit more so then here you fold the seats one third two thirds split and yeah it folds flat directly that's a practical solution and the total length into the seat as i would be driving is about yeah a little bit less than 180 or 70 inches as for engines let's sort them for you by significance and how often they will be bought 1.5 liter diesel they're still offering it it will be less and less important then there's a 1.6 liter plug-in hybrid maximum electric range of around 50 kilometers or 30 miles then there will be the Astra EV the all-electric Astra by 2023 we'll keep you updated with that so subscribe if you haven't done so far and the most important one the 1.5 liter three-cylinder turbo petrol engine 110 or 130 horsepower we have it here today combined with the automatic gearbox the petrol engine will still be the one that will be most relevant for most customers so far right now and that's why we're going to drive this one right now welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the opel or Vauxhall astra sports tourer a little bit longer wheelbase than the hatch how will this affect driving you're going on the German motorway on the Autobahn near the Opel headquarters in the main plan and so far nice agile feeling in the corner let's go to the sport mode and accelerate from 60 kilometers an hour Boop, 100 so that was 60 to 100 how did I say that 100 I meant 100, I said that afterwards. So you see here the 1.2 liter three cylinder engine here in the 130 horsepower trim combined with the eight speed automatic gearbox. Not an explosive engine, but this is supposed to be a price performance vehicle. And that's why it's also okay. The plug-in hybrid very, very expensive. The diesel, less and less people are going for it, definitely. And the Astra AV will be very exciting, definitely. But the key thing with this vehicle was now, well, exterior, most of us agree, looks really stunning from the exterior design, elegant or black styling. Interior it was, awesome seats, both the elegant and the sportier microfiber seats, looked cool, very comfortable indeed. But how is it in driving? Well, on the con side, we had here on the interior that some of the parts are, you know, not that great from the build quality, some parts feel cheap, but driving wise it feels very good indeed so you know first of all on the motorway noise insulation so far so good here at 120 kilometers an hour so like 70 miles an hour remains pretty silent suspension there is not this most elaborated rear axle however doesn't shake up too much and so far we have decent comfort also from the suspension there's just this one setup even if you have the GS line, it will remain with this setup and that's also actually okay. So, comfort as for seating and suspension is no problem. You feel that you have a little bit longer wheelbase than in the hatch. It feels a little bit more settled on the road, let's take it that way. On the con side, there would be that you lose a little bit of agility with the estate here, but not too much. So. They don't feel like completely different cars, it's just a little notch. So if you don't need the space in the rear and you want a sportier ride, you stick with the hatch version. When we are already at speed, is there still something happening from that engine here at 110 kilometers now? Let's see. Yes, 120, 130. So because you have that turbo, that's still somewhat okay. By the way, the heated windscreen, if you go for that option there in the front, has these visible small lines in it, the heating. Um, to me, it's not ideal. I always see that, actually. To me, it's very distracting. Same also with Ford vehicles. I more appreciate this 
this foil layer solution that they have, for example, um, you know, in, in the uh, VW Group vehicles. Um, oh, there's traffic jam, so we can also test. Maybe we go off the motorway then, but we can test in the cruise control for that. So we go first to the right lane. The turning indicator sounds quite funny, doesn't it? We already had that in the, in the hatch version. And here, cruise control set on the left side of the steering wheel. And you can either get a normal cruise control, but also one with steering assist and so on. But let's get off here, otherwise we're stuck in traffic for too long. And here we can also test the agility and it really feels a lot of fun. Steering is direct. You see here, I don't have to steer too much. And the automatic gearbox also does a good job. We have been testing the hatch both with the plug-in hybrid and the petrol engine and the pure petrol engine just feels better. It feels nicer. It is, let's say, the more, you know, like the, the smoother experience, I would take it that way, because you don't have any transitions between the drivetrains and it sounds actually quite nice here. Yeah, Connie sees yeah. it's, it's a great sound, yeah. I mean, it's a 1.2 liter three cylinder. It's like, we feel like a sports car, yeah. you know, like, nah, nah. yeah, this is the thing with the three cylinders. They often sound very unique and even, yeah, sometimes better than the four cylinders indeed. And driving wise, I'm, yeah, I'm really very satisfied with this vehicle. I have been with the hatch as well. Here yeah, also, when we go like left and right, the car doesn't shake up too much. And I still think that the comfort is also good, even if we have some bumps in the road and so on. So we've been talking about in the hatch review as well, how German this car is, although so many parts are being shared with the French sibling. And driving eyes, you really have to say, it does a very nice extra job. It's a lot of fun to drive. And that's to me a key finding, even here then for the Sports Tourer, you don't lose much driving fun. As I said, little different of agility in favor of the hatch, but still, you have a vehicle here that, especially with a small petrol engine, is not too expensive. And you can go here. This would be my tip, you know. Exterior, the Thomas Blue, the Vertigo Blue. And then stick with the Elegance trim level, not too expensive. Here, get these nice bright fabric seats that do good comfort. You have most of the important options already in then. And then you have a decent vehicle at a decent price, good price performance. That's the main selling factor of the Astra, that you have the good price performance. There are, you know, enough vehicles that are way more expensive that do this better, this better, this better, this better. But you always have to take a look at, yeah, okay, but at which price point, you know? So that's the, the, the key thing right here. And, the Golf then, in most cases, will be more expensive. Here, by the way, on the brakes and then on the throttle. Yeah, for the city, it's definitely more than enough, also acceleration-wise. So the Golf will be more expensive in most cases. The new Golf generation also has some shortcomings, also as for the interior build quality. Um, yeah, to me, the thing would be really that some things I would say, hmm, doesn't give me the most elaborated feeling in the interior. That's, to me, something to consider. Maybe they can topped it up then you know with next changes or, or mid-cycle facelift or, and so on but exterior wise and driving wise these two things are really great and also as for the seating uh, comfort overall so they really tweaked also the steering here that is different than in the Peugeot um, with Peugeot 308 um, yes it does feel a little bit more French but in what way um, here with the Opel with the German engineered setup you have a little bit more connection with the car, you know? So the Peugeot steering, for example, feels more artificial. You also have this more artificial cockpit. And here you more have, a, although you have the screens now, you know, analog way of controlling the car, you know? Also here with the volume control and the steering input is really, it feels very natural, by the way. Other driving modes, you can go back to the normal driving mode, then the gears are not turned up that high. The sports mode, it just allows a little bit more RPM before shifting up. And then there's also the eco mode, which does exactly the opposite, reducing the throttle input that you can have more fuel savings, for example. For our shorter trip now, we had 
one or two accelerations in there and so far here at this moment we are at seven liters on 100 kilometers and when you do not do these harsh accelerations you can also score something better than more like six something liters on one kilometers and i think for that it doesn't really make sense to go for the plug-in hybrid then in this case the plug-in hybrids are bought when there are governmental subsidiaries um all this probably like okay, taking tickets for everyone yeah that was the german ordnungsamt ordnungsamt listen and repeat german lesson for the day that's like the traffic police you know who's serving all the tickets for everyone parking at the right uh, at the wrong spot <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah um you know the people working there they they can't i mean it's not their fault you know but always when when you see people from the ordnungsamt everyone's like Oh my God, now am, am, not, am I now getting a ticket? <laughs> yeah, okay. But of course we would never, we would never park in the wrong spot, right? Okay, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so here now a little bit low speed driving and even here the car feels very agile, very nice. Here in the you know, surroundings of the German Opel plant. And the cool thing is really that this car can do both. It feels small enough, compact enough for these narrow roads yet at the same time we felt at home on the motorway and to me this is here a good case of a vehicle which is not too high in the price but basically serves all purposes sporty driving fun you have a car that is emotional from the exterior yet at the same time you can use it as a full family vehicle and you just need this one vehicle and nothing more or less from the vehicle so this is kind of like you know Uh, one serves it all vehicle that's why i really like it as i said earlier the only shortcomings i see that some of the parts you know could be a little bit more attractive on the interior what you feel and see and so on and that's the only thing i can really find everything else is really on a very very high level so overall i have to say of course it's not the best overall compact vehicle because there you find something in the premium segment for example but pay so much more money but if you think at this moment it is definitely one of the best price performance vehicles here in this compact segment and it will be even more interesting when the ev version will come out so hit the subscribe button not to miss any of our reviews and now check out the peugeot 308 the direct competitor internally from that corporation And of course the VW Golf variant, the estate version of the Golf.